Welcome to St. Peter Lutheran Church. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. The Old Testament lesson for this Palm Sunday is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear. I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint. I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him who come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me, who will declare me guilty. This is the word of the Lord. Now our epistle comes to us from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born the likeness of men, being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now, among those who were up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. 
If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know what he is doing. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him. So that the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart in turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him. But for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience. Be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is a day of great celebration. Godly pilgrims from all over the world have made their way to Jerusalem to celebrate. The population of the city grows larger every day. The number of people in Jerusalem is so great that many must leave every evening to camp out in the hills that surround the city. There is hustle and bustle of the approaching festival. Soon the people will celebrate the Passover, that great victory of God when he rescued his people from the slavery of Egypt in the days of Moses. Among all the Passover pilgrims who entered Jerusalem this day, one has a different reason for fulfilling the ancient law that requires all the men of Israel to present themselves before the Lord. He came riding on a donkey, a colt that has never been ridden before. His disciples and many of the Passover pilgrims honor him with praise as he enters Jerusalem. Yet our gospel for this day tell us that there was a lot of confusion concerning this pilgrim who rode in Jerusalem 
that day. Those who praised him gave him messianic titles, such as Son of David, King of Israel, and so on. These titles would have been accurate if the people would have understood their true meaning. Sadly, many thought that Jesus was coming to use his miracle working power to give them earthly wealth, to drive out the Romans, to restore the empire of Solomon, to make Jerusalem the most important city in the world. These Passover pilgrims were doing exactly the right thing in praising Jesus. Sadly, they were doing it, however, for all the wrong reasons. The Pharisees were also confused. We miss out on the symbolism because the symbol of the palm branch is different for us than it was for Israel. We are used to seeing the six-pointed star of David as the national and religious symbol of Israel. But down through the years, the palm branch has also been a symbol of Israeli pride. We see palm branches and we think peace. The Pharisees were afraid the Roman soldiers would see the palm branches and think Israeli resistance. They were terrified that the Romans would interpret the noise as some sort of uprising and send the troops in to shut it all down. Then there were the Greeks who came to see Jesus. We focus so much on Israel that we sometimes forget that God has his people and other nations as well. These Greeks were godly men, but they had not entered into the formalities of the Jewish system. Even though they were not formal members of the Jewish religion, they looked for the coming Messiah. They had heard the talk. Could this Jesus of Nazareth be the Messiah. They wanted to meet Jesus. But as Gentiles, they are not free to move about the temple grounds. They asked Philip to relay their request to Jesus. Philip found Andrew, and the two of them went to Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. No doubt, there were some who heard these words and would have said, Well, it's about time. Now we will see something really spectacular. No doubt, there were a few among the disciples who were enticed by the palms and hosannas of the crowds. Now Jesus will reveal his true royal nature. Now Jesus will drive out the Romans and establish his kingdom on earth. And as quickly as these temptations arose, they were dashed. Jesus continued, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. What did Jesus just say? Did he just say that his glory is to die and be buried like a seed. For years, Jesus kept saying, My hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. Now here in Jerusalem, after this glorious prayed up into the temple, Jesus finally states, The hour has come. And the hour refers to his death. How can death be glorious? It is interesting that Jesus spoke of himself as a seed. Thousands of years earlier, before he took on humanity in the womb of the virgin, he came to visit Adam and Eve in the garden. It was a sad journey. Adam and Eve had just eaten the forbidden fruit. As he laid out the consequences of sin, he promised that the seed of the woman would crush the serpent's head, but at a price. 
the serpent would bite the heel of the woman's seed. Now Jesus was in Jerusalem to take the poison of the serpent's bite while he crushed the serpent's head. The poison would kill him and he would rest like a seed in the earth. Then, just as the seed germinates, so also would the Son of Man leave the ground and bear much fruit. Jesus regularly, consistently, and clearly proclaimed his suffering, death, and resurrection. He clearly proclaimed this as his glory. He clearly proclaimed this as our salvation. Nevertheless, his disciples, the crowds who sang his praise, the Greeks and the Pharisees, were consistently confused. They were unable to understand that the greatest expression of the glory of God lies in Christ on the cross, where he suffered all in order to forgive the sins of the world. Jesus wants you to have a share in this glory. But in order to share in this glory, you must die. Jesus said, whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Jesus used the word life in two ways. Life here on this earth and eternal life with him. Those who love the life of this world will lose their eternal life. Those who die to the life of this world already have eternal life. That is what holy baptism is about as the Holy Spirit desired the Apostle Paul to write. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We are buried therefore with him by baptism into death. In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For we have been united with him in death like his. We shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. There was a lot of confusion on that first Palm Sunday. Few if any people understood the reason Jesus came to Jerusalem on that day. We have no excuse for such confusion. The Bible plainly states that Jesus came to Jerusalem on that day because he had an appointment with a cross on that next Friday. For the life of the baptized believer, it is one of continually dying to sin and rising again to new life in Christ. This is the way it is for the believer until our Lord takes him out of this valley of sorrows to himself in heaven. There we shall wait for the final day, when our bodies will rise to immortality, and we shall live forever at the new earth, where there will be no need for death, because there will be no sin. While we live on this earth, we look forward to that day where there is no death, but only eternal life. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. May the peace of God surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen. And now this time, let us pray for the whole church, that the Lord would defend her against all her enemies and keep her true to Jesus Christ by the power of your word and spirit. Gracious Lord, keep your scattered church in your mercy that she may endure the assaults of the evil one, remain faithful for the sake of those numbered within your kingdom, and those who have not yet heard the gospel and brought to faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all pastors, for all church work vocations, for all the baptized in their vocation as God's people. Almighty God, by your Spirit, you have gathered us as your church and promised that wherever two or three are together in your name, there you are in our midst. 
Do not allow stress or disaster to distract us from the particular vocations into which you have called us to serve in the church, home, and community. Grant to us every gift and blessing needful that we may honor our calling and serve you to the best of our ability. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism, for the newly baptized, for those being catechized as children and adults, and for those joining our congregation. Almighty Father, your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish your purpose. Hear us on behalf of those who have heard your word, who are being baptized into Christ, and joining the fellowship of our congregation, that they may keep the faith with holy and joyful hearts, trusting in Christ as their Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the government. For all the authority over us, for our own lives as citizens and neighbors. Almighty Lord, you have established the kingdom of the left and hold accountable all those who govern in this and every place. Guide our president, the members of Congress, the governor of the state, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. That they would serve nobly and wisely, pursuing the path of justice protected the citizens and trusted to them. Give them the wisdom and strength needed to bring our world out of crisis and back to stability. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for an end of violence and terror, for those imprisoned, for the troubled in mind, and for those who suffer any afflictions in the body. Merciful Lord, your grace is sufficient for all our needs. You have promised to be the strength of the weary, the hope of those who fear, the healing of the ill, the fullness of those disabled, the peace of all who are distressed. Hear us on behalf of our nation, the world, suffering pandemic and isolation. We pray especially for all whom we name in our hearts, that they may be well supplied by your grace every time of trouble. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray for those not yet of the King, that God would make us bold to speak the faith to them in that hearing they might believe. Everlasting Father, it is your will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of your Son by faith. Give to your word success and deliver from air all those who live in darkness and fear, that they may walk in the light of the Lord Jesus, and have confidence for the trials of this world and hope for the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And let us pray for the earth to be fruitful and for our good use of all the fruits of the earth. Blessed Lord, who give food to the hungry, provide for all our needs of this mortal life. Grant to us a grateful heart, the knowledge to use wisely and will all that you have entrusted to our care. Bless those who make, prepare, deliver, or serve our daily bread, and give relief to those who were, has been halted. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Holy Lord, as once your son was welcomed with palms and hosannas, help us to welcome him who comes to us this day. Guard us against false teaching, and help us to discern truth from error, that none may be led astray or lost from the fellowship of your son. Look with kindness on all who are separated and comfort them with your promises, especially that they are never distant from the mystical body of your son, the community of saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us this day.